Hey guys, if you uh, watched my previous video on the Fluke 27 repair, you'd know that these uh, four 8020Bs were part of that package that I got. Um, I've been racking my brain thinking about what I wanted to do with them video-wise and also afterwards because if I can repair most of them, I really don't need three of these meters hanging around. But first, let's talk a little bit about them. Um, I've taken one of them apart. Uh, PCB says copyright 1982, so we can assume they're made after that. So they're not the oldest of the old, but they are still very not new at all. But I have gone through them, done a few function tests, and it looks like three of them will actually be viable to become good meters. And one of them just looks like it is absolutely trashed. So that would be this one here, which I believe it'll actually become a donor meter because there are some parts that these other ones need. And I think it'll work out really great that I'll be able to get three good meters out of here. And if I do that, what I would like to do is probably keep one of them just to have basically as part of the collection. And the other two I believe I'll list on eBay. Um, there's very, very little... Inform not information out there, but very few people that show things about these meters because they are so old. But they're really good meters. They were almost but not quite the first, that would be the 8020As, of the handheld, easily portable digital multimeters that Fluke produced. They're um, nowhere near as tough as the 27s, but they are still very good meters. Um, I believe three and a half digit. Uh, they maintain accuracy really well. Uh, we may go through a calibration procedure on, I believe this one looked like it might have been a little off. Um, but no real major problems on these three. Uh, this one looks functional. The battery connector looks a little iffy, which I actually received those yesterday. I'm going to go ahead and replace all of them on the three meters. So we'll get to see a little bit of soldering in this one. Uh, the button is missing on it, which I'll take this button from this one. This one seems functional. Battery connector, I believe on this one, may have actually been cut. Um, it also needs fuses, which I'll check all the fuses on all of them. Uh, the buttons actually need to be replaced in the proper order. Because obviously someone disassembled this one before and put this button, which needs to go down here, way up here. Um, and the uh, tilting veil is missing, I believe, on two of these meters. This one, um, we have a stuck button here, which I think will be an easy fix. It may only require a little bit of mineral oil and a little bit of working to get it going. It seems functional other than that. Uh, the readings did look like they might be a little bit off, but we'll see if we can find a calibration procedure for this. And we'll use the, we'll probably go ahead and use the 87.5 as a reference if we do the calibrations on this. And of course, the battery connector. This meter, the readings were just all over the place. So I really believe that the chip in it has just, is starting to kill itself. So. It'll be just as I need parts, I'll pull them off of this one and transplant them to here. Or whichever meter needs them. As far as repairing these meters, I think what I'll do is, since a lot of them do need similar repairs, and some of them aren't even really worth calling it a repair, like if it's disassembled, it's nothing to take a button and put this button on that one. But uh, we'll go through the changing the battery connector, for instance. And if we do something different to this meter, like getting this button unstuck, you'll see that it'll already have a new battery connector on it. I'll just do that repair as a group, and then we'll work on this button as a unique repair. It'll be its own video. That way there's not a bunch of repetitious repairs on a bunch of repetitious repairs on every video. And that's pretty much it for these. We'll, uh, we'll see how it goes with them. 
I think there'll be some pretty cool little meters. There's not a lot on YouTube about these. I think I found one video that was in English anyways on the 8020As. But the 8020Bs are a little bit different, a little bit more functionality. Um, they're actually really easy to use meters. Uh, I know when I was first getting into things and I saw all these big roll buttons, I, it was like a little bit overwhelming compared to, you know, the range switches they have nowadays where you flick it to what you want, auto ranges. But they are really simple to use and they are actually very good meters. So I think once kind of some of the repairs are settled down, we'll do a, not necessarily a review, but an overview of how they operate. We'll go through function testing on that video and just kind of play around with them and show people how cool these meters are and why they're almost historic, at least in Fluke's days. Since we're talking about future projects, I figured I would go ahead and introduce you to the Yokogawa. 734-02. Um, a few of the things that kind of attracted me to this meter, the very first thing was that it actually has a range switch operated shutter that protects the amperage inputs, which is a really good thing to have on meters. Not necessarily to say that for people that don't know how to use a meter, but just you never know, you might not be paying attention and have it in the amps range one day and short it to the mains or something like that. But it's just a really, really cool little meter to have. I really think it'll be a nice one. It's also stated to be very accurate for a handheld meter, 0.02% on DC voltage. Um, I know there's more accurate ones out there, but for the age of this thing, it seems like it it's a very accurate meter. Um, it can also read 100 kilohertz. That's fairly high, I believe. I don't, I don't remember what the Flukes 87 specs are. And it also has uh, millivolts AC, which is kind of different. It's almost totally unnecessary, but it's a, you know, just a neat little feature. And another thing that I really, when I started looking into this thing and researching, and I thought was really cool was that on the capacitance and the resistance range, you'll see here it says zero cal. And where, say on your 87.5s, if you go into the resistance range, you can hit your relative button. It won't let me do it now because there's nothing connected, nothing shorted. You can hit your relative button and actually zero the meter out and that's good it's a awesome little thing to have it's really handy but the reason that this one I think is a little bit better is because it doesn't actually need to be used as a zero for the relative it has a relative function on it but that is used more as a differential function if you're applying a voltage just let's say you want to know if an alternator is good you can put this on the battery you rail it out you crank the motor and you can see your voltage over battery voltage on the resistance and capacitance range you actually will zero the meter out so you can still go in if you're reading the resistance and rail it out and then read another resistance and see what the difference is between them, which I thought was a really neat function and could be real handy on some things. So I got a really good deal on it. At least I think I did. Uh, Tom will tell because the damage to it is that the battery connector had corroded and it's one of those little it holds two AA batteries and it has wire leads that go to the PCB and I'm hoping that the corrosion didn't go too far into the PCB that it was mainly isolated in the connector we can change that connector out and 
have a really good high-end meter. Because these meters sold, they're discontinued now, but they originally sold for about 400 bucks, which is competitive to the 87.5. So I think it's going to be a real high-quality meter. It's made in Japan. It's not made in China. I believe there are some Yokogawas nowadays that are made in China, but this one was made in Japan. You can hear a little bit of rattling in there, so we'll find what's going on inside of that whenever we crack it open. But I think that this will be a neat little project, and I think it'll be a great meter if we can get it running. So we'll see that video whenever it comes up. Talk to y'all later.